Hi, hi everybody. I'm Jenny Russell. I'm your teacher for independent studies. Some of you know me and some of you I haven't met yet. And uh, I wanted to make this video for you today because um, we are in the first week of school and many of us had not have a chance, had a chance to meet each other yet, which is totally fine. This is normal for independent studies. Often um, it may take a week or two before we actually meet in person but that's not a problem. I want you to know, I want to assure you that you're off to a great start in school and um, you are earning credits already because you have a Gmail address, you've joined my Google Classroom, you've answered my texts, and um, the reason for the delay, which is again, this is common at the beginning of the school year, is even though the first day of school was actually last week on Thursday, August 11th, um, we, the teachers, we don't have our rosters yet up in the computer in the school information database. The rosters have not been put up yet. So that means I can't see your transcripts. I haven't printed your transcripts yet. And to do independent studies, I like to look very carefully at your transcript and make sure that I prepare homework for you that's exactly what you need in order to complete your high school diploma and finish. And you'll be working at your own pace. Don't be nervous. Um, another thing that a lot of my students are concerned about is they tell me, you know, I have kids, I have a job, I just don't know how I'm going to be able to keep up with homework. But just remember, this is not like school used to be. If, you, you know, 10 years ago, you were attending Wattsville High School or Scotts Valley High School, and you were going to school every morning at 7.30 and staying for seven hours a day, this is way different. This is independent studies. You get to work at your own pace. The most important thing is that you keep in contact with me um, and you've probably already found out or already learned about me that um, texting me is a really quick way to get a response. I do check my texts often for my students and if you have a question and you text it to me, you will probably get a reply within an hour. Um, as far as talking on the phone, however, um, I often do not answer the phone because I'm in student meetings almost all the time. I have a lot of students on my roster. I work with each student individually and independently. So if you do give me a phone call, I will probably not pick up because I'm in another meeting, but I, I will call you back and you'll probably get a text back too. So I encourage you to text. Also emails will get a prompt reply because on my phone I can check my emails even when I'm in a meeting and give you an answer to the question. Um, Another question that students often ask me is, do I have to do my student my, my homework online through Google Classrooms? It's not required, but you will notice that I um, give you a lot of opportunities to try doing your homework in Google Classrooms and with Google Documents, because over time, I've had many students tell me they start with a paper and the paper packets and writing out their answers, and then they end up preferring to do their phone on Google Classrooms because Google Classrooms you can do on your computer. You can also do it on your phone. I do have a student um, last year who, who called me. He said, I got an opportunity to work on a fishing boat in Southern California. I'm gonna be on the fishing boat Monday through Friday and I can only come on land on the evenings and on weekends. I have Google Classroom on my telephone. Do you, are you going to drop me as a student? And guess what? I said, I don't have to drop you as a student. If you are able to do all your homework on Google Documents and upload it, turn it in in Google Classrooms, you can stay enrolled in school. And he did, and he graduated. So this was a student who in the beginning did all his homework on paper and writing it out in a, in a spiral notebook because that's what he felt comfortable with, which is completely understandable. Uh, even me, you guys, I'm almost 60 years old, so with technology, sometimes I am not comfortable and I have learned everything slowly in the hard way, but even I am starting to feel like I prefer to do um, my schoolwork online. I'm even liking Zoom meetings better than I used to, and I can teach you how to use Zoom if you would like. I'll give you credit for that. Um, in, okay, now that we're talking about credits, how do you earn credits in, in independent studies? Every teacher is different. Um, the thing with independent studies is we are certified by the state of California and we are authorized to assign you credits as we see is um, best for you as a student. So there's some flexibility involved, which is nice. When I talk about flexibility, 
for example, these first two weeks when I'm not giving you specific chapters in a book to do, you are still earning credits. I give students digital literacy credits, um, which are flexible credits. So for example, by logging in and joining my Google Classroom, I gave you one full digital literacy flexible credit. And when I review your transcript and make your plan, I will apply that one credit into a subject that you need to graduate. So you are already earning credits. Um, I have students who sometimes prefer to sign the registration paper electronically using a Google document. That's a tricky skill. They have to read the instructions very carefully and figure out how to do it. It is possible. About half of my students choose to sign their contracts electronically. I give them a digital literacy credit for that as well and I apply it to a subject they need to graduate. Maybe English, you know, maybe an elective. Um, another way to learn credits, earn credits, is what's called activity logs. I do expect my students to turn in one activity log at least every week. Activity logs cover different subjects. Um, in our school, we've developed an activity log that's called the Career Exploration Work and Job Log. And if you look in Google Classrooms, you will see that I've uploaded one for, next, for this week. Um, and you can see how it's made. Um, it documents the learning that you do in your job. Now a job can be at a restaurant, maybe you're a healthcare worker, maybe you are working in an auto mechanic shop, maybe you are a home health care aide, maybe you are a parent and you are um, taking care of children, your children, someone else's children. Whatever you're doing during the day to earn money, and remember parenting is a job, it's considered a very important skill life skill to have and as we all know if you are a parent you apply all kinds of life skill and knowledge to being a parent um, diet nutrition physical activity health and well-being of your children helping them maybe enroll in school or in daycare um, helping with homework reading to them at night um, muchos de mis alumnos son bilingües y están en, enseñando sus hijos Como hablar español y inglés a la vez, la misma vez, right? Ser bilingüe vale por dos. So be sure to document all the life skills that you have attained or that you are working on in your life now so I can give you school credit for that. For a career exploration work and job log, if it's complete, and again, I will show you a sample. I don't have a sample here. I've got a PE log sample that I will show you. Um, you can earn one credit and I will apply that credit into English or into a subject area that you need to graduate. Many of you need elective credits to graduate. So um, I do have an example of a PE log that I can show you. So it looks something like this. Now again, you'll see this in Google Classrooms where the each day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, the student has described the activity that they did for two hours. For example, walking and weightlifting on Monday for two hours, walking and lifting for two hours on Tuesday. Maybe lifting is lifting the kids up the stairs, right? Remember parenting is a lot of work, physical work and mental work. Uh, walking and weight training, walking and weight training. So this person has documented 10 hours of physical activity that week, two hours a day, Monday through Friday, on the PE activity log. And on the back of the activity log, there is, um, a section that looks just the same only it says mindfulness and health and on the back the person the student is going to document one hour every day of mindfulness mindfulness health activities to earn credit and those can be activities like anything that you do for your mental health or well-being you document it on this activity log and turn it into me and I'm gonna give you credit school credit because this is super important especially right now during the pandemic, recession, everything that's going on in the world, um, my students' mental health and physical health is of primary importance. It's probably the most important thing that you can be working on right now because that needs to be in place in order for you to do well in life and in school and to learn. So for that reason, I feel it's really important and I do require my students to turn in a PE health activity log to me every week or um, a career job work log every week. I'll be telling you more about this as we move forward, but I just wanted to give you the overview. 
Um, so one PE health activity log is equal to one credit, again, in PE or electives or English. Um, okay, enough about logs. Let me go on to the next thing, the transcripts. I think I mentioned to you that, um, so everybody has a high school transcript, right? It looks kind of like that. It shows what school you attended in the past, and it shows a summary of how many um, credits you still need to earn in every certain subject. For example, English, this person needs five credits more. World history, this person is complete. This person did not finish two credits in US history, okay? So what I'm gonna be doing in this week to come, and this is why I don't have a lot of student meetings scheduled right now, because I'm busy preparing your files so that the following week we can get you started targeting some of these specific subject areas. Um, I will look at your summary on the transcript very carefully and I will create a file packet for you and homework that specifically targets exactly which subjects you need to graduate. If it's two in U.S. history, then I'm assuming that you already had eight credits in U.S. history in the past. And so I'm going to find maybe um, chapters nine and ten of the textbook for you. I can give that to you as a packet. Uh, one chapter from our textbook is equal to one credit. So you read the chapter, you answer the questions, you write them out on a piece of paper, or you type them out onto a Google Doc. That's the old fashioned way, and it's totally a fine way to turn in your credits and earn one credit per chapter in a subject area. I do have a flexible plan, however. Um, some students start to want to do their homework online more, and that is totally fine. The other thing is the textbooks are kind of old school. You know, the old school US history textbooks, chapters one through 30 or whatever, and it's the kind of standard history of the United States, which is important information and I, it's available for you to learn. However, history is so broad and sometimes students have um, more passion to learn about a specific area of US history. For example, uh, thinking of a student that I had um, last year who was not much of a reader. That student had dyslexia. He had a successful business and he was super interested in Latin, Latin American art and the history of like the Pacheco classic car movement. Um, and so he decided, he proposed to do a project for U.S. history instead of reading the chapters and turning those in. And his project was related to um, understanding the symbolism and the artwork that's in the classic cars, tattoos, the Checo movement, a lot about California history, and then how the California Latin American art has influenced um, tattoos in other areas of the country. And he documented how some of the tattoo images were actually um, spread or borrowed or inspired other artwork like in New York City. It was a super fascinating project and he earned US history credit for that. So I just wanted to put that out there so that you can understand. I'm gonna give you the basics that you need to get your high school diploma, but some people are more creative learners and like to follow their passion or maybe have an area of US history or another subject like physical science. They really wanna study and explore and research on their own and then provide to me, their teacher, documentation of how they're learning. So that's, op that's op an opportunity also, an option. Last of all, when you get to know Google Classrooms better, you're gonna see that there's a lot of resources in there for you to explore. One resource that students have explored that they tell me they really like is called the ReadWorks Reading Library. And it's um, my, it's Jenny Russell's Reading Library in the ReadWorks, whatever, link, website. It's for teachers. I was able to download, oh gosh, a lot, uh, 50, 75 reading passages that I thought my students would be interested in. Again, all my students are adult learners and it's stuff I thought you guys would like. Um, if you read all the titles, you'll click on one that has to do with a subject. Let's say you need physical science credit. So you're gonna click on, um, ah, physical science, I'm trying to think of physical science one. Well, it was about Braille, which is how blind people feel the dots to um, read, to learn how to read. Braille was invented. It, it was a story about how Braille was invented. So I'm getting calm, I'm gonna hang up. How Braille was invented and um, the technology of Braille. And that's physical science credits. So you read the passage, it's 
about five paragraphs. And then um, there's about 10 questions, multiple choice questions that you answer. And then you click submit and you can earn um, a half a credit in that subject area. So two ReadWorks reading passages submit the answers and that's a full credit in physical science. And what my students have reported to me is that in the beginning learning how to use it, it took a little time. And then once they got the hang of it, that they could earn a full credit in their subject in 15 minutes to a half an hour, which is really fast. If you consider when you used to go to your comprehensive high school, it probably took a full week to earn a credit. So I encourage you to explore ReadWorks and explore some of the online learning options that are there in Google Classroom because once you get the hang of it, you will be moving quickly through your credits, I promise. Um, again, you can work at your own pace. And again, learning how to do things digitally, I know it takes a lot of time. You gotta watch YouTube videos and tutorials and try things and make mistakes. And oh my God, I lost my Google document. Don't worry about it, we can get it back, okay? So it's okay to make mistakes. It's okay to start an assignment, turn it in in Google Docs lose it, text me, we'll find it again, whatever. You will be earning credits along the way for the learning that you're doing and the effort that you're making um, while you get the hang of it. Um, I will be in touch with you more about setting up those appointments, but essentially an independent study student is expected to meet with their teacher once a week for 15 minutes. So that means um, we can talk on the phone once a week um, it might be an email confirmation. If you are doing all your homework on paper and not digitally, then you need to bring it to me and hand it in to me once a week. And because I have students throughout the week, I'm gonna hold a spot on my calendar for you at a particular time. For example, if you live and work in Watsonville and you wanna meet me at the Watsonville office at Sequoia Schools, I will plan to be there every Wednesday and Friday afternoon making appointments with students. Um, so you could have a, an appointment time, for example, 3.30 Friday afternoon at Sequoia. That's when I will expect to see you or expect a text from you or a phone call or an update um, so that I can update your weekly assignment folder and make sure that you are turning in schoolwork, keeping in touch with me and earning um, those, what we call 20 hours of schoolwork every week. I need to document that. So I will be talking to you more about, you know, the minimum requirements and if it's okay to move ahead, that, that is okay, but I'll explain that more to you um, in person, on the phone, or in future videos. But this, I hope, gave you just an overview of what independent studies is like, who I am as a teacher. Um, again, I have students in Santa Cruz and in Watsonville. I live in Watsonville. Um, so I will be here at the Santa Cruz office meeting with students on Tuesdays and Thursdays and I'll be at the Sequoia School's office on Wednesdays and Fridays, unless it changes, I hope it doesn't. Um, and so let's be in touch and make sure that you have a weekly meeting time where we will connect. Um, but at this point in time, in the next week or two, the only thing I need to meet with you in person is to make sure you've signed your registration, uh, your sign-in form. Um, and if we can't do that in person, then um, in the next week or the following week, I will make those available electronically so that you can do it an electronic signature. So I do have to get that in your folder. It's one of our requirements. Okay, so nice meeting you. Hope to meet you in person soon. Again, I'm Jenny Russell, and please check your emails, check Google Classroom, check your texts. Uh, I do send out lots of information all the time. I need you to keep on top of that, and um, let me know if you have any questions. I look forward to being your teacher this year, and um, I know you can do it. I will help you. And um, it's really, really exciting when you get that high school diploma, you come to the ceremony. I will tell you more about the graduation ceremony at a future, at a future time. But um, it's a really lovely event, and um, I know you can do it. All right. Thanks. Talk to you later. Bye.